So we've just landed in Rotterdam. I'm with the elite of Britain's media, allegedly. What's happening, guys? Excitement levels high? Very, very excited. Don't all speak at once. So what, what are we up to then today? What's the plan? Open a window first of all. Then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's broken down. <laughs> is this the, I, I is this the this customs of standard this, you're this, normally used to? This is broken down. <laughs> it's broken He's, down? Yeah. yeah, you want to film this, mate. Oh, you can't even change gears. Bloke. This is no. a good start. <laughs> <laughs> I played McKenna. Oh, yeah. All right. Man, Tom Tom. Sean Eagle was extremely worried he's got another seatbelt. <laughs> so, we're, at, we're obviously going to meet Tyson Fury today. A big, big moment for you guys. I know how much you hero love him at the press and that. What, what are you expecting today? Some interviews. Yeah. Some chat. Have you been over to the training camp before? No, looking forward to seeing it, what it's like. Yeah. Have you any idea of what, what to anticipate, what to expect when we get there from the from the camp and stuff? No, he looks, looks in, in good shape. Impressive gym, yeah, he looks to have lost some weight. Yeah. Is that the expert analysis? <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. That's why he's paid the big bucks. That's the big bucks there, that's, that's the big why bucks. I get paid. Let's talk to the main man. Is that the Jeff? Oh yeah. I'm good. 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 Talk to me a little bit about what we can expect today, Jeff. Well, the training camp, assuming it's the one I came to um, myself a um, year or so back, is right on the borders of uh, Holland and Belgium. Okay. It's actually nearer to Brussels Airport than it is to the, the Dutch airports. Okay. Um, the, the gym is just in Holland, and the house in the woods, the big wooden house in the woods where they live, uh, with a caravan in the garden, is uh, just inside Belgium, if I remember correctly. The gym um, is, is a, a big purpose used place that they just have the use of, if it's the same one. Giant pictures of uh, Tyson on the wall behind it, um, usually with his opponent ranged up against it, so Vladimir's picture should be there in great evidence. Both larger than life size, and then some, something, a couple other pictures of the same size. That's what they had before. And, um, it's, uh, it's it's quite a cool place to him actually. Yeah, quite a well equipped and sort of away yes. from prying eyes. It's, they, they, when I came last time they had a sponsor for it and so it was extremely well equipped. It was Correct. backed by a wealthy local trader who wanted to bring um, attention to the uh, the area in which this is, this is located. What do you give Tyson Fury's chances of retaining his titles against Klitschko this time around, Jeff? It's, uh, if, unless Vladimir changes, there is as good as we should have thought the first time. Tyson's an exceptional athlete uh, for a man his size, and uh, he's also um, a mind bender. He, he gets under into people's head. That's the technical term. Yes, if, uh, if that happens the same, then he, he should win a similar kind of fight. But everything depends upon Vladimir. Can he change? Because the leopard change in spots at his age, is that possible? Um, will he do something different? Um, Will he risk being hit by a bigger man, which seemed to intimidate him last time? Uh, if he does that and he lands on Tyson, then it becomes a very interesting fight. Let's go to one of the younger members of the press Young. entourage, Mr. Glicksman. How are you, sir? I'm all right, mate. Yourself? Good. I'm very well. I'm very well. Good. I've got to say, you didn't stop talking that whole plane journey. I'm trying to kip. I can just hear Glicksman rabbiting on about boxing. Boxing mate, predictions. making it up as you go along now. That's my world. Talk to me about the fight, how do you see it going? The fight, well, I think as Jeff said, at the end of the day, Klitschko's gonna have to do something dramatically different, otherwise it's gonna go the same way. But, is he gonna wanna go out on back-to-back -back defeats? I don't think so. So, I expect him to come out, he might actually throw a right hand this time as well, which would help. Uh, it wasn't, it was a very untypical Klitschko performance last time around. He normally just had, prods that jab out, doesn't he? And it lands with a right, but um, didn't see that at all. But Tyson has obviously got in his head he made Klitschko swear at the press conference as well, which I think is the first time just gonna he's come ever, into that. Yeah, he's ever lost his rag. So, I don't know, maybe we are going to see, maybe he's going to unleash the animal. The animal and we're going to see, see Klitschko just go for it and throw a lot of leather. But I think Fury comes away with his titles again. Do you think Klitschko can change his style or even his game plan at this sort of age he's at? I mean, is he versatile enough think to not, do that? He's always been that sort of, I hate to use the word robotic, but that is what he's, he's done in the past. 
So, but as I say, last chance saloon, isn't it? So, yeah, I, th I think he could do. He's going to have to. If he wants to win, he's going to have to change his game plan. First time he was very dismissive of Tyson Fury in yep. the press conference. He seemed to look at it like a standard defence. Do you think this time he'll have a different mindset coming into this? Got to. I guess when you've had as many defences as Vladimir did, you, you you sort of get stuck in a not vicious circle, but everything's the same, isn't it? You know, you just think I'm going to go in there, get a the job done, get the guy out, or I win on points. And it's, it's just that simple. But um, Tyson's just totally different to anyone he faced. I think he threw Vladimir out of his just normal game plan in terms of what he said, the way he boxed. He's very awkward, isn't he? You know, you just can't, it's hard to sort of pin down, I guess. So, um, but yeah, I, I think Vladimir's still got it. And at the end of the day, he's got no choice. You lose two in a row, there's no way back then. You know, it's retirement, you go out as a loser. I don't think he'll want to do that. No. What do you reckon Vitaly would have been thinking? <laughs> Like at the end of the first fight. Vitaly was probably thinking, I want to go in there and beat you up um, and you know restore the family pride. But obviously, <laughs> that was a few years ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, I must point out, I didn't get travel insurance for this one day trip and I'm starting to regret it. But maybe Klitschko's got more chance of winning than we have getting back in one piece. Okay, okay on that note, I want to go Thanks. to Chris McKenna. Go to Periscope View and get expert opinion from the man himself. That's because I'm small. That's because you're small. Very intimidating. <laughs> How are you? You alright? Very good, mate. Yourself? I'm good. Good. Give me your expert analysis. Talk to me. On the fight? Well, not on life. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You might want my expert analysis on life. In general, how, how, how do you see this fight going? Break it down. Well, I think Vladimir Klitschko is going to have a more of a goal this time because I think he knows it's his last chance. If he loses here, it's pretty much all over. So I think that should make for a, a more exciting fight for fans than last time because he'll come out and start throwing more shots and be more aggressive um, if Fury boxes the same way. That's if Fury boxes the same way, but you never know with him. He might be more aggressive, but assuming Fury boxes similar, I think we'll, we'll see Klitschko put it on him more, but everything you've seen in the first fight, you, it's going to be tough for Vladimir to close that gap and be able to really nail him. I think he'll be braver this time, trying to throw he, more right hands and try to nullify him. If he's not in the first few rounds, I think he will later as the fight goes on later because there's no point in just doing the same as last time because he, his career's going to end in two back-to-back -back defeats without really throwing right hands, which would be a waste of time really. So I think he will have more of a goal this time, definitely. Big, big moment for Tyson. Does he have to be your hand with the pressure back in Manchester as the champion? I think he'll handle it easily, well he doesn't really seem bothered by pressure, I mean the last time he was so relaxed the whole week out up to the fight, everybody was expecting him to kind of freeze wasn't it, when, when it would hit him at some point, it, the size of the event he was in and that, but he walked out to the ring smiling and messing around and everything, so he never got bothered by it, so I think he'll be even more relaxed in Manchester definitely. I think people will start getting behind Fury a lot more this time. He, he's, he's done his unified division, he, he's coming back to the fan of home soil. Do you think there'll be more of a buzz about Tyson Fury in general? There was a buzz before the last one and I think immediately after and then it kind of tapered off a bit when some of the controversial stuff that was said and people kind of turned against him because of that. Um, I'm not sure how the public will take it. I think tickets have gone quite well even though they're the high cost, so I think there is going to be probably sold out by the fight, fight comes round. So as long as um, there's no more real mad controversy, I think people might start to warm to him a bit if he's more the jovial Tyson than the Tyson of has been and gotten into trouble in the past. We see some of the different sides of Tyson Fury. He's, he's very likable. He's very funny. He does things off the cuff. Do you think sometimes that doesn't come across as, as in the mainstream media as much as, as the Tyson we see? the mainstream media really because he's quite good on mainstream media when he's interviewed for TV and stuff like that it's when he's kind of I don't know how to put it when he's bored and that he kind of seems to come up with different ways of looking at life and that so yeah that's a unique way of phrasing it you are that's quite a unique way of phrasing yeah um, but I don't know I, don't, I think in the mainstream media when he's, he can be very good as well going to come to one of our senior men, Mr. Ron Lewis at the back there. I'm going to risk life to try and get a few words with you, sir. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. good, yeah. Good. How was your journey? How was your flight? It's all right. A bit late, a bit rainy at the other end, but, you know, we're here. Yeah. Small planes are always a bit bumpy, but, you know. 
talk to me a little bit about Tyson Fury, Vladimir Klitschko. How, how do you see it playing out this time, Ron? Um, I, I think you've got, you got to think that Klitschko's got to change his game. And I think the, the great thing that um, Fury did in the first fight was he, he took set the jab away from Klitschko and that's Klitschko's main weapon and he didn't, and he didn't really have, a, have anything more to go to because he wasn't landing the jab, he wasn't following up with anything else. I think um, if Klitschko's going to win, he's got, he's got to start throwing lead rights and he's got to, um, not to worry about landing the jab. He's actually got to um, try and adapt and, and go in and throw the right hand and, and follow up with the left hook. He's got to do something that throws Fury off his game plan because I think otherwise Fury will just stay doing what, what does these days was he would just move and, and pick the odd shots from odd angles and um, that, that was enough for him in, in Dusseldorf and, and I'm sure he's having to do the same thing in Manchester so I, I'll expect that different I don't expect we'll see a um, I, I don't expect we'll see Klitschko storming forward throwing lots and lots of punches but he's got to make different punches and uh, he can't rely on the left jab because if Fury takes away his jab again we're going to see exactly the same for him. We saw in the last time in Dusseldorf in the final round, he's going to try to step on the gas a little bit, maybe too little, too late. Do you think he'll start the fight with that mentality this time around? No, no, I don't at all. I, th I think he'll try and find a target. I think that's the key point. There's no point just going and charging after him and looking for him. It's okay with doing that when you're desperate to try to win. He's got to try and land his right hand on him. And he's not going to do that by, um, you know, by. He's a very stand up boxer. If he, if he gets his head over his front foot, Starts, starts going and looking that way, he's not going to be landing many punches and he's going to get picked off. Um, Fury is happy, happiest as a counter puncher, and they know that. And um, what he's got to do, he's got to land. And if the jab isn't landing, he's got to find something else that lands. And I think he'll pick his shots and I think it'll be um, a bit of a pick the way into the fight and, and we'll see how it settles. But I, I don't expect we'll see Klitschko go hell for leather from round one. I mean, that's not his style and there's no point he's got to impose his style on Fury there's no no good him just adapting to a style he's not comfortable with because then you know it's Fury's fight straight off do you think this could be the end of Vladimir Klitschko if Tyson Fury does a job on him over in Manchester do you think he would call it a day do you think yeah he I, I think definitely he's got nowhere really to go for that he's not going to want to be coming an opponent for a Wilder or Anthony Joshua is he um, I think um, it's, it's quite impressive that Klitschko's taken the fight here. Was that there was a, a, a strong thinking, and there was a lot of room. I mean, you hear a lot of rumours in boxing, mostly because rival promoters are constantly trying to do other, other promoters down. So, um, but you know, there was a lot of gossip, especially when the fight wasn't announced, and, and you know, we never knew when it was going to take place. We never got a date. We never got a venue for ages. That, that Klitschko wasn't actually going to take the fight. And the fact that he's gone away and he's had Christmas and uh, you know he's gone back to his day-to-day -day life, which he seems you know, very relaxed and happy with, and, and this is still burning him enough that he wants to go and reverse it. And he's turned 40, of course, as well. Um, you know, that's sort of uh, impressive that he thinks something can change. You know, Klitschko isn't isn't some sort of deluded guy who thinks um, it was some sort of fluke. He may have. He performed below expectations, but he knows that Fury made him perform below expectations. And he has to find a way of changing that. And if he thinks enough that, yeah, I can change that, that's why he's coming over it. Again, if they'd have they're pressed, they're, they're pressed it, I'm sure this fight would be taking place in Germany. If you think it makes more money in Germany, um, certainly from the live gate. And um, so the fact that he's coming over to Manchester and he's happy to do that shows it's got to be a certain element of confidence in that. He's not, he's not doing it to keep the promotional company doing, going. There's lots of sort of fight. When you look back at the guys who promote themselves, like De La Hoya and even some people like Felix Sturm, you think there's a, there's a way that they sort of keep boxing to try and uh, keep, keep the company on top. But, you know, the fact he's willing not to be the promoter. And, uh, you know, it's got to be something he believes he can do. And he believes he can do different. Yeah, we'll see what that is on the night, I suppose. It'll be very interesting to go and see Klitschko in camp. I mean, I doubt they'd show us much, but, um, you know, it's often interesting to see the kind of guys they're working with and what they're doing in sparring and that sort of thing. Because, um, you know, last time he was looking at the yeah, he was in the South Pole, he was in the smaller, quick guys, and he was in the big guys. And so they're kind of preparing for everything, but at the same time, what he did didn't work, because I think their plan was entirely based 
and be that controlled fury with a jab and, and they couldn't do it. That's right. Want to come to IFL TV's unofficial tipster. Third wheel. Declan Grom Taylor, the third wheel, as good at betting as a casual punter at Epsom Derby. Yeah. Not good stats from you recently, mate. Yeah. Talk to me about the fight, break it down. Um, which fight? Oh, no, what would you suggest? Um, to no, be honest, I, Fury, I think it's going to be much the same as the first fight, I must say. I know um, this idea that Klitschko's got to bring more, and I'm sure he has, and he, he'll try, but at his age and fighting against a style like Tyson Fury's, I think he's going to find it difficult again to, to close the gap and land the right hand. He'll try, obviously, and I'm sure he'll be better, and be better prepared psychologically, you would think, after dealing with Fury for the first time, but I mean, Tyson Fury's going to be just as awkward and just as difficult to get his head around in this fight, you know, even if he's lost. See, you know, what, what, I'm, I'm struggling to see a way that he can reinvent himself, which to be honest he's going to have to do to, to win, you know, in some, in some respects. I'm struggling to see a way he does that at his age. And I think Tyson Fury wins again on points. Uh, yeah, I would say that's a good bet. I'd, yeah, I'm, it's, it's not bad. They're probably better value in there somewhere, but I think if you're looking at the fight and looking at the history of the, their first fight and also if you look back at other rematches in boxing it, it's, it's not often that you get a complete turnaround or you know a change of style from someone I think it's going to be very much the same and in that respect I mean a lot of people had had Klitschko not um, not even you know some of them had it a draw some people had Klitschko winning I didn't but some well-known broadcasters from England had it you know a draw or even Klitschko winning so you know so he's gonna Okay, yes. He's swearing again, that driver. Um, so yeah, good bet. Good bet. That's what I'd have. But I've given up betting now, James. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Terrible bet. Giving up betting. How does Chris go deal with someone who touches their toe before he throws a jab? That unorthodox of the theory. How does he get to grip with I think that's a, that's a problem, mate. That's <laughs> Wait a minute. We've we just found out we've been going the wrong way for about 40 minutes. Did he sort it? Funny, we haven't changed directions though. <laughs> Is there a reason for that? <laughs> he's got no idea what he's, what he's doing. He can't even change gear. As long as he gets us there eventually. Oh, the day. He's on it. So wacky and zany, though, isn't it? Yeah. Media men. Proper madcap. The media men. All right, media Don't men, I'm going to leave hours. you to do some work. Men of the pen, thank you very much, and I will talk to you again real soon. Thank you.